goodness, we're having the worst time trying to get the technical difficulties up today. But listen, it's going to be all right. Amen. It's going to be all right. I hope you can see us. <laughs> I hope you can see us. We are trying to get things together. Now I see some people coming in. Thanks so much. We had a surprise and we were trying to work around the surprise. Then we put the everything on a new program and it ends up not working. So listen, and then I think it was working and we thought it wasn't working, so we took it down. But here we are. And listen, it's another celebration time. It's an inspiration celebration and we thank you so much for joining us. We thank you so much for tuning in because we are here to inspire, to encourage, and to impart wisdom into you this morning. Whatever it is you're dealing with, whatever it is that you're having an issue with, listen, we want to see if we can help us to get unstuck. Yeah, sometimes we get stuck in things. We get to a place where things just seem like we can't move forward. Either we've been hurt so badly by people that we love, or things just happen, I call it life happening. And in those situations, sometimes we just don't understand how to move forward. But today we're going to try and help us move forward in some areas where we may be stuck. Before we begin, let us say a prayer. Let's go to the throne of God, asking his blessing upon today's meeting. God, we thank you so much for this opportunity to come before your people, God. I'm just the mouthpiece, Lord. You do the speaking, you do the leading, you do the guiding, God. We're here at your direction. So we thank you for the opportunity and thank you for everyone that you have online today. And we pray that they will be blessed by the words that you say. In Jesus' name, we say amen. Hallelujah. So listen, it's another week. Now I know that you have been, um, it's been a great week. It's been a good week. We, we were able to um, get some accomplishments done, some things done, and only God can do that. He can help us to move in his will and move forward. So listen, I don't know if you've had time to think about what it is that you have, an area that you have a struggle in. And we're going to be transparent, you know, because if you have the struggle, guess what? Someone else probably has that same struggle. And if that is the case, we want to see if we can speak some encouragement to those situations. Amen. We want to be able to, 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 to see if we can make it make sense to you. Okay? So, if you would, in the chat, in the comments, make a note area that you would like for us to discuss today. We only have an hour, okay? So we're going to discuss as best we can and try to bring clarity to your situations as best we can, okay? So write in the chat, write a comment or something that you would like discussed, okay? And we're going to talk about it. We're going to do our best to talk about it. In our last session, someone asked me, well, what, um, what is your cash app? I don't do this for money. I'm doing this because I'm led to do it. But there are people that do understand that they can get blessed uh, by sowing into the life of the woman of God. It's up to you. That's not something that I ask you to do, but it's something that if you want to do, listen, feel free, okay? Because this is, is God's way of giving back to you something that you give to him. So we have two mediums. You can either go cash app, dollar sign, G-L-E-N-I-C-E, -E D Glover. That's my name. Cash app, Glenice D Glover. Sharice, could you put that in the chat for me, please? Cash app, Glenice D Glover. And then if you don't, aren't familiar with cash app and you would rather use PayPal, you can do PayPal too. My email is address is guitar, that's G-U-I-T-A-R, G-I-G-I -G -I, at gmail.com. That's a lot of G's. Guitar G -G at gmail.com, okay? G-U-I-T-A-R, G-I-G-I -G -I at gmail.com. If you would like to uh, donate during um, 
these sessions via uh, PayPal, okay? That's the last time I'm saying about money. It's not why I'm here. I'm here to help you, okay? So continue to think about what it is that you would like to talk about, and we're going to talk about it. I was speaking to a young lady today, uh, earlier this week about these sessions, and she says, well, wait a minute now. Is this a church thing? I'm like, well, it's church, but it's not church, okay? So it ain't church the way you, you're used to seeing. It's not church the way you're used to going, because she sounds like, listen, it's just going to be boring, and I'm just not with that. No, it's not that kind of session, <laughs> We're actually going to be speaking to you and speaking into you about some great things. And we're going to help you get unstuck. We're going to answer questions that you've got about life, questions that you've got about. So we're it's interactive. So it's not just church. And worship experience is an awesome experience, but this is an, an this is not an ordinary worship experience. Amen. This is something that we use laid back. Listen, I got my tea. I drink hot tea. I got my tea, I hope you have your tea, I hope you have your coffee, I hope you have your Danish, whatever it takes to get you through this hour smoothly, get it, put it in your hands, get it done, okay? So that's what we're doing, we're here for you, we're here for you. But listen, this song struck me when she asked me that question, is it gonna be boring, is it gonna be, I hope you're watching, young lady, I hope you're, you're looking. And I hope you're listening because this isn't your ordinary worship experience. Amen. This is where we get down and dirty. We talk about whatever it is that's on your heart. So here we go. This song, I'm going to give you, and I told you, we impart basic, based on music. We impart based on word. We impart based on our own experiences. This is how we help you. This is how we encourage you. Revelation says the people overcome by the word by the, the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. So listen, we're no ashamed about, we're not ashamed of what God has done in our lives and how he has brought us through some real tight situations. I know you have tight situations too. Don't be ashamed. Put it in the chat. If you got something you need, you need clarity on, we're going to talk about it. Okay. I can't get any more transparent than that. I'll tell you my stuff. You got to be able to tell me your stuff. Okay, here we go. Listen, this song says, while you're thinking, this song says, this ain't no ordinary worship. Okay, and now, nope, I do not own the rights to this music. Okay, just so you know, I do not own the rights to this particular song. This is a song that hits exactly where it needs to hit this morning. Amen. So I want you to listen, enjoy Bear witness, if you see, well, yes, Lord, I can identify with this, then yes, it's okay to put your hearts up. It's okay to put your thumbs up. It's okay to put in the comment, amen, we're not going to be afraid, okay? So listen, no ordinary worship. Listen at this.
he, oh, he deserves a praise this morning. Hallelujah. Greater than ordinary. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. He's greater than ordinary. Hallelujah. That's our God. Now, we give out special gifts to those who participate in this experience, okay? So it's greater than just coming and sitting and listening and just saying, oh my goodness, that's a boring out. No, we give gifts to you when you participate, okay? If you've got a problem, if you've got an issue, if you need clarity on something, if you need an impartation of wisdom from the word of God, listen, Place it in the chat now. What is it that you want to hear about? What is it that you want to talk about? What is it that you have a problem with? Some people just have a problem with being, church, being in church, church folk. And that's okay. We can talk about it. If faith is your issue, we talked last time about faith. Young lady had some issues with faith, just didn't understand the process, how it works. Others were grieving, they're hurting, they're pain, there's pain inside, and they wanted clarity on the grief process. We spoke about how it is a natural process. It hurts, it takes some people longer than others to get through, but it's a process that you have to go through, and you have to embrace the pain while you're there. If you don't, guess what? It will show up again later in your life, and you don't want that. You want to get it talked about you want to get it resolved okay so is there a comment at all and who's getting this first gift gift card these are 25 dollar gift cards for ross or for dd discounts you can spend them on clothes you can spend them on whatever it is that they sell in the stores ross for less everybody's familiar so we've got six giveaways six cards to give away today if you are interested. Let's talk, if you don't have anything to talk about, let's talk about being betrayed. <clears throat> Has anybody ever been betrayed by someone close to you? I think those hurt the worst. The fact that the person that you trust the most, the one that's on your side, one that's walking and running with you, for them to betray you, that's a hurting thing, isn't it? That's something that some people never get over. It taints their spirit so desperately until they just really do not ever get through that. So how do you handle it? How do you handle it? Are you the first person to have gone through this? Or did people in the Bible, did the people in the Bible have to deal with betrayal? Did they have to deal with distrust? Did they have to deal with people close to them walking next to them in betrayal to them when with one in one breath the words i love you slither off of their tongue and the next breath the dagger is in your back are we the first people to have to deal with that or have others gone through this situation well listen i'm here to tell you we're not the first this is not the first generation to have dealt with betrayal in their lives. I found a guy in the Bible, yeah. And I believe the Bible is written for today. Everything we go through, I believe someone has gone through it before and they left a mark. They can teach us how we are to best go through this stuff. And I found a young man who the scripture says is a man after God's own heart. Some of you already know who we're talking about. Yep, we're talking about David. David was betrayed. He was hurt. And he's going to tell us how to deal with hurt. A lot of times, the, 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 the thing that comes natural for us to do is not the thing that we should do. Right? We talked about that last time we were together. We talked about how we have to adjust our attitudes. Then we adjust our attitude, which is the way that we would normally handle a thing. And then we will find out we will be taken to the next level. Our altitude will always be higher. So it is in this situation. 
<clears throat> when we've been betrayed, the natural thing to do is to fight, right? The natural thing for us to do is to get them back, right? They one up you, you two up them. That's natural. That comes, that comes natural, right? That's what we all want to do. But guess what? That is not always the best way to handle situations. Lisa, I see your comment, procrastination. We'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> procrastination. So Lisa, in the uh, message, once we're done here in message, send me your mailing address, okay? And we're gonna, we're going to um, send you a gift card. We'll get to procrastination, but let's talk about this betrayal thing because that's something that really hurts. And it can get us so stuck and so far down that we sometimes don't come out of it. And that is the scary thing. That's why we need to talk about this stuff. Because if we don't talk about it, then we're going to end up doing what? We're going to end up being stuck in that situation. And it's going to taint every relationship we encounter after that hurt. Okay? Because guess what? Believe it or not, hurt people will hurt people. Yeah, if you're hurt and you haven't resolved that hurt, guess what you're going to do? You're going to hurt somebody else. It may not be intentional, but you're going to. It's a fact. You're hurting. You won't work through your hurt. And then you're going to snap at somebody else, maybe a child for no reason. And what does that do to that child? That damages or hurts that child. So you're going to always hurt someone else if you don't get it resolved, okay? So look with me, if you have your Bibles, Psalm 55. <clears throat> Psalm 55. We'll call this the betrayal of a friend, okay? And if you're like me, you don't have a whole lot of close, close people. You watch who you include in your immediate circle, and that's wisdom. Because some people do not, hello, Denise, some people do not belong in your immediate circle. Okay, there's a circle of acquaintances that you're cordial to, you'll, you'll see them out, but there are other people that are in your close circle. Very few should be in your immediate circle, okay? Jesus only had 12 in his immediate circle, and guess what? One of them betrayed him. So listen, betrayal is something that is not new. It's something that is very common. It's been going on since the beginning of time. So listen, here's how David shows us how he handled his betrayal. And I think it's going to benefit us as well. And if you've never encountered betrayal of a friend, listen, keep living. Keep living and keep your eyes open because it is prevalent and it does happen. But listen, in this psalm, as I was reading through this psalm, and you probably read it already, and you probably know exactly where we're going with this. But as I read this psalm, the first eight verses, I could almost hear David and Jesus dialoguing. I could almost hear it. And here's what I heard. I heard in these first eight verses, the contemplation of David's ramifications. Okay. This is David's contemplation of his ramifications. And, and, and when I read it, I hear God asking David a question. What's wrong, David? What's the matter? And in verse 2, I hear David saying, I'm restless and I moan noisily. And then God says, okay, well, why is that? Then I hear David say in verse 3, because of the voice of the enemy, because of the oppression of the wicked, they bring down trouble upon me and in wrath, they hate me. He says these people hate me that's why so then god asked them i hear god saying well how does this make you feel david then verse 4 david says my heart is severely pained within me and the terrors of death have fallen upon me so god says really it's that bad is there anything more david said yes there's more verse 5 he said fearfulness, trembling have come upon me. Horror has overwhelmed me. 
So much so, you know, God, if I had wings like a dove, you know what I would do in this moment? You know what I would fly away and be at rest. In other words, I'd be out of here. Then verse 70 says, indeed, I would wander far, far off and remain in the wilderness. I would just stay in the wilderness. <clears throat> then there's this word, Selah. That means, wait a minute, just hold up. Listen, ponder what has just been said to you. So David said, this hurt is so bad that if I could, I would just dismiss myself from this earth. Or I would leave here and just wander in the wilderness. In verse 8, he says, I would hasten my escape from this windy storm and tempest. This thing is hurting me. It's so great. I'll just be out of here. So that was David's contemplations for the ramifications of the hate of the people. Then the second thing I see is here, David's recommendation for vindication. He said, God, this is between me and you. These folk have harmed me so badly. Here's what I suggest you do to them. <laughs> now, not that God needs David's suggestion, but he just thought he would offer to God. You know, since we're, you know, I'm a man after your own heart. So I think he, I think you would listen to what I have to say. Here's what I think you should do to these people for their harm to me. Verse nine, he says, destroy Oh Lord, divide their tongues. For I have seen violence and strife in the city. Here's what they do. Day and night, they go around their city on the walls. Their sin and trouble are so great and they're right, it's right in the midst of it, all of their actions. Verse 11, destruction in the, is in the midst. Oppression and deceit do not depart from its street. This is a wicked people. So God, you know what? So God says, well, you know, why is this so hard for you to deal with, David? Why, why is it so difficult? Why is it taking such a toll on you? Verse 12, David answers that. He said, it's not the enemy who reproaches me. He said, because if it were, then I could bear it. I could deal with that. Because you expect your enemy to do evil. He said, I could deal with it. He said, neither is it someone who hates me that has exalted himself against me. Because if it were, then I could do what? I could go off and I could hide myself from him. God said, okay, well, if it's not the enemy, and if it's not someone who hates you that's causing you all of this pain, then who is it that has you so worked up? Verse 13, he says, it was you as if his friend were sitting right next to him. He said, it was you, a man of my equal companion and my acquaintance. You and me, we took sweet counsel together. We walked to the house of God in the assembly. We were aces. We were right next to each other. I told you everything. We encountered the worst together. I thought you were my friend. You're listening to my problems with, with one ear, but then the dagger is in your other hand. You, out of all the people, you hurt me. So this is why the pain is so great. This is why if I could, as David's saying, I would just take flight. I would get up out of here. I would go into the wilderness somewhere way far away and just be at risk. Have you ever felt like that? I have. I've been there where I felt like I just, I just can't believe this. Anybody but you. The one who claims to be my, 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 my buddy my pal, my friend, but you hurt me. And rather than deal with the hurt, I'd rather just go on, on about my business. I'd rather not have anything more to do with them. I'd rather not just be associated with anybody because now I can't trust anyone. If 
the if if the closest one to you is gonna mess over you, then sure, how how can you trust anybody else? You know. But there's hope. There's hope. There's hope. Take a deep breath. Come on, let's do it together. Inhale, exhale. One more time. Inhale, exhale. There's hope after this. David has done three things. He's acknowledged his pain in this thing. Okay. He's contemplated what he would do if he were God. Okay. He would kill him. He's already said he would destroy him if he were God. But the one thing he didn't do, he didn't take on that particular role. He recognized that the vengeance belongs to the Lord. You see, what we don't see David doing, David did not rush in to his enemy. He did not rush in and say, you did this to me. I'm going to, I'm going to square it up with you. Let's go. Let's get at it. You did. You know, he did not try and take that matter into his own hands. He gave it over to the Lord. He gave him suggestions what he would do, but he didn't do that. Look at what happens in the, sec the, the third section of this message, verses 16 through 21. David gives specifications for his own liberation. He says, I need to get freed from this. I need to be free, be free from this. I can't run away from it, although I would, but I can't do that. So look at what he does in verse 16. He said, as for me, here's what I'm going to do. He says, I will call on God. And the Lord shall save me. <laughs> Say, how often are you going to call on him, David? Is it a one-time shot? No. David says, verse 17, in the evening, in the morning, at noon, he says, I will pray and cry aloud. And he, God, is going to hear my voice. He says, verse 18, he has redeemed my soul in peace. In other words, there is no reason for me to come back. There is no reason for me to be angry. There is no, I can be hurt, but I shouldn't be, I don't have to be angry. He says, what I'm going to do, I'm going to be in peace because God is going to fight this thing for me. So listen, I don't care what it is you're going through. I don't care how tough the battle is. Listen, it does not belong to you. It belongs to the Lord. And I guarantee you, he will vindicate you better than you can vindicate you. And you will do it. He will do it in peace with you. You will have peace in the midst of it. That's a guarantee. You might cry. You might shed some tears. No, you will cry. <laughs> you will shed some tears. You might even shed a few pounds, but it's okay. You will be at peace knowing that I can't pay you back, but I have a God who watches out for me. He looks over me and he's going to handle this thing for me because I belong to him. And he's already promised me vengeance is his. That means he's going to get him back. You know, so in essence, David was saying what you, what he was suggesting that what you could do. But for me, I'm just going to God. I'm going to leave it in the hands of God to straighten it out. Look at verse 19. He says, God will hear me and he's going to afflict them. Even he who abides from old, even them old heads that got that got my name in their mouth, doing evil behind my back. They don't change. Look at verse that is. It says they do not change. Therefore, they don't even fear God. They don't even think God going to do nothing to them because his grace has sustained them all this time. They don't think that God has the power or that he is going to do. He's going to cover me because it's me. Keep it up. He's not covering you long. It's just a matter of time when you're going to have to pay the piper. Amen. Because see, when you hurt one of God's children, that's a sad place to be. You don't want to be at the uh, opposite end of an angry God. You just don't want to be there. You don't want to be in that place. Verse 20. David says, he, that one who betrayed me. He said, he's put forth his hands against those who were at peace with him. I didn't mean, I never meant you no harm. Yet you chose to hurt me. Get it? 
Same with you. You never meant them any harm. You didn't mean to 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 at all hurt them. Yet they hurt you. Verse twenty one. Look at what he say. He has broken out his covenant. In other words, we supposed to be we supposed to be tight. We supposed to be like white on rice. And now all of a sudden, you don't broke the covenant. You done something. You did the opposite. <laughs> Look at twenty one. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter. That's the one who betrayed you. His words were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. See, that's why the word of God says man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. He knows what's inside a man. You don't care about what you do, your deeds. You know, if your, deeds your deeds can do whatever you do. My dad used to have a saying for us. He said, listen, a person's mouth will say whatever they wanted to say. That doesn't mean that what's in here is the same as what's coming out of their mouth. They'll say what it takes to appease you. <laughs> Daddy taught us this. They'll say what it takes to appease you. But in the end, their heart is far from what they're talking about. In fact, it's just opposite of what they're talking about. So you got to be careful with people, especially those close to you. They say keep your friends close and keep your enemies closer. That way you go, you know exactly what's going on, or you hope to know. This in David's case, he didn't know. He thought that he could trust what was being said to him. So verse 21 says that the words of his mouth were smoother than butter. And you sisters that are single and you're 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 encountering brethren that's trying to get you in his corner. Listen, be careful. Because his words can be smooth like butter. But on the inside of his heart could be something totally different. They know how to say what you want to hear. And brothers, the same thing for you. You got some sisters that can be smooth as butter, fine as wine. But only the true love can stand the test of time. You got to be careful in your choices. Wait things out. There's no hurry. You don't have to rush into anything. Time will tell the story, okay? He said his words, his mouth was smoother than butter, but war was in his heart, and his words were softer than oil. I mean, just flowed off the tip of his tongue. Yet they were drawn swords in the same breath, the same so hard to imagine that that could come out of the same person, right? Such smooth, kind words on one hand, then on the other hand, a dagger, a sword, a fight, an evil heart. My Lord. So then the last thing David talks about in, in, in verses 22 and 23, he does an impartation for your restoration. He does an impartation for my restoration. Look at what he tells us. He says, I'm going to God, okay? And But it is what he tells us to do in verse 22. He says, cast your burdens on the Lord and he shall sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved. But you, O oh God, shall bring them down to the pit of destruction. Bloodthirsty and deceitful men shall not live out half of their days. If they lived to their 30, they could have lived to their 60, but they wouldn't put aside the wickedness. But he says, I will trust in you. That's David's word. He's, he didn't tell you just his story. He didn't only suggest to God what he wanted God to do. He didn't only tell you what he's going to do, but he imparted something into you and me. He says, cast your burdens on the Lord. So I don't care what's bothering you, what's hurting you, how difficult it is, how unbearable it seems. Listen, cast it on the Lord and he will sustain you. He's going to keep you afloat. He's going to keep you looking good even in the midst of what you're going through. You can be downtrodden and if you are casting your cares on the Lord, you will not look like what you're going through. 
I get my biggest compliments and you probably do too when you're going through. Why? Because you're making sure that you're up to par. You're making sure that the hair is done. You're making sure the nails done. You're making sure your face is straight. Why? Because you don't want to look like what you're going through. You don't want to walk around because we represent Christ. We represent the one who can, the one who is. So we got to be up to par. God is able to handle them. Every battle is not yours. Every fight is not yours. It belongs to the Lord, but he can only fight it if we give it to him. Amen. If we're still going around trying to fight him ourselves, guess what God's going to do? He's going to step right back. He's going to let you handle it. He's going to tell you, go on, go on. Yeah, you can do it. But then when you tire yourself out, then guess what? God now can handle some stuff for you. So don't be in combat with God. He's on your side. He's your teammate. So if he's saying, I can handle this, let him handle it. And he says, every care, I don't care how small it is, how great it is, it can be thrust upon the Lord. And he is going to sustain you. Trust him. Trust him to do that. If you trust him, I guarantee you, he will do it. He will always vindicate his children. He's going he's gonna to make it right on your behalf. The enemy can be pressing you on one hand and God's going to be blessing you on the other. That's how he operates. The enemy can be uh, down, down playing your name on this side of town, but God's going to be raising your name up on this side of town. That's how he works. Enemy never wins. Not in God's camp. He never wins. Amen. So listen, I want you to just enter the rest of God. Because God is your healer. He's the healer of your spirit. He's the healer of your heart. He's the healer of your mind. He's the, all those things that you feel like your mind is about to explode. God said, I am the healer of that. I don't care where you hurt. That's what he does. He is healer. Amen. And let's sing a song about that. God wants to heal you. Wherever you're hurting, if it's in your heart, he wants to, he wants to mend that broken heart because he's God like that. If it's in your spirit, he wants to restore you because he's God like that. If it's in your physical body, he is the healer, Jehovah, God who heals. He's that. So he wants to heal you everywhere you're hurting. the 
healing now. I need your power now. I need your strength today. My battles are too hard for me. Take them. Hallelujah. And he will do that. Leave it in his hands. Don't pick it up again. Allow him to do what only God can do. And that is to make it right for you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, he will. Come on, I pray that God has blessed you through that because even me, he has blessed me as he has given it to me. He's blessed me. Listen, we've got 10 minutes left. Hallelujah. <clears throat> 10 minutes left. Virginia wanted to talk about procrastination. My, 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 procrastination. <laughs> that is something that I think at some point in our lives, we all have had to deal with. A lot of times procrastination comes from fear. It's a place where we are when we're afraid to just move forward. We're afraid to do what we're called to do. We're afraid that it's going to fail. We're afraid that we're going to be talked about, that we're going to fail, that we're not going to be accepted. But if God has placed something in you to do, Virginia, there is nothing I can tell you to do, but do it. Do not analyze it. Well, why does he want to use me? What does that mean? Well, who is it? No, you will never be able to see the outcome that God sees. So don't do it. And this goes back to what we were talking about last week. We end up... Uh, really not having faith that God is saying what he's saying. And if you're procrastinate, procrastinating, that means you already know that what he's saying is what he means. But the fear of it all is what has you standing still. But I'm telling you, you got to move forward. <clears throat> and that is the theme of this entire inspiration celebration. You not, were not here with this in our last session, but the reason we're doing this is because God is saying this is the season that we need to be going forth. That's what he's saying. Go forth. If he has placed it in your heart to do, if he has put it in your spirit to do, if he's disturbing your sleep about doing it, I'm telling you, you can be afraid. You can be scared. You can be uncertain about yourself, but don't be uncertain about God and what he's going to do. Because what he's looking for now is instruments. He's looking for vessels. He's not looking for you to always have in your mouth what it is to say. He never tells me exactly what to say with, uh, until two or three days ahead of time. I'm seeking him from the moment I leave here to the next meeting. He doesn't tell me what to say until two or three days ahead of time. That's how he wants. He wants to make sure we're always in tune hearing him. Otherwise, we're going to take this platform and we're going to use it for our own gain. And that is not what he wants us to do. If he's placed something in your spirit to do, just move. That's all I can tell you, sweetie, is just do it. Like the Nike sign, just do it. Do it afraid. Do it scared. Do it knowing that it's God. He's going to bless it. Because guess what? <clears throat> He already has the audience set up for you. <laughs> it is not about you. He's got the audience set up to hear what he has told you to say. So if he says, say it, listen, just be bold enough to do. He tells us in my, my verse, be strong and courageous. Your knees might be shaking. It's okay. He knows how to calm your knees. Butterflies might be in your stomach. He knows how to calm the butterflies. You might have a stammering tongue, but like Moses, he knows how to get his words out without your help. Just your willingness is all he needs. So I hope that helped you. No more procrastination. Just if he says do this, set the date and just do it. Leaning and depending on him all the way because all he wants is your availability. He wants to speak. He wants to say what it is that he needs said. So there's no need to fear. There's no need to be afraid. You're afraid of your ability. That's good. That nervousness is really, really good. That nervousness tells you 
to, okay, that nervousness tells you that it is going to take God's doing. And that's what God is looking for. He's looking for you to be so scared that you don't know what to say. And that's good because he don't want you to say nothing. He wants to speak through you. It's about him saying, okay? You just do your study. You just do whatever it is you can do. And then you leave the rest literally up to God. And he will do it. He will do it through you. That's all he wants. He wants vessels that he can use. He don't want folk with egos that are going to take over his job. He don't want that. But you, he wants you. And he chose you. There are going to be people who say, well, how he choose you? Well, what you're doing? You ain't got this. It isn't about them. They don't know what they're talking about. If God has chosen you, God has chosen you. Just do what God has said for you to do. And don't worry about the others. Just like David said in this message, God will handle them. And if he has to shut their mouths, he knows how to do that too. But you don't even worry about them. You just worry about your place. Because listen, in the end, when Jesus comes back, guess what? He's coming back to see and ensure that we have done what he's assigned our hands to do. So you can't say, well, God, I, I was going to do it. But they were just telling me that it was not good enough. And they, they were telling you? What did I say? That's what he's going to tell us. But Jenny, he's going to tell you, what, what did I say? If I said, do, that's what I meant. I didn't tell you to listen to the other the naysayers. <laughs> So we're not going to have no excuse, Lisa, when we get there. We're going to have an excuse. We just got to do what God has said. And you do it blind with blinders on. You don't see anybody to the left. You don't see anybody to the right. You're just walking forward in what God has called you to do. And that is going to get you to your next level. We gave the example last time about how Israel under Joshua's leadership, was crossing the Jordan at trouble time, trouble season. The waters would have drowned them, but God told them what? What was the instruction? God told them to step in the waters, then he would part the waters. Huh? <laughs> if I step in the waters, I'm going to drown. No, step in the waters. That's an act of faith. And then I'll part the waters. So he's saying to you, Lisa, step in the water then I'll start parting the way. Then I'll be sure. I will show you as you go. Not going to give you every little step of the way. You have to trust me. And when I say do it now, he means now. Because the people he has ready to receive what he has to say through you are ready now. But if you wait until next year, those people are gone on about their business. Guess what? That blood is still applied to your hands, Lisa, because he, he told you to move now. You wouldn't move now. So you have just, you, you, something could happen to those people because they were waiting on your word or they were waiting on your book or they were waiting on whatever it is God placed into you for that season that they were in. Now they passed that season and you didn't touch them like God said. You don't know who they are. Only God knows. He's already got the audience set. So just do it, okay? I hope you heard the Lord say, just do it. Someone is asking still about Cash App. Okay, the Cash App is dollar sign, G-L-E-N-I-C-E-D, Glover, okay? Dollar sign, Glenice D, Glover. Or if you want to use uh, PayPal, it's guitar, G-I-G-I, -G -I, at gmail.com. Thanks for listening, Kevin. Thank you so much. Is there anyone else? Is there another thing that issue that we can tackle in two minutes? <laughs> we have only two minutes left. Amen. So if not, so Lisa, send me your cat, send me your address. Okay, you get this gift card. Anybody else? A gift card, $25 is yours. Okay, I don't see. Thank you, uh, Denise, for putting that in. Thank you. So listen, I hope you have enjoyed something said today. And I hope that God has spoken to you. Because he surely has spoken to me, even as we delivered to you. We thank you so much for tuning in. We thank you for your time. We thank you for uh, being a part of this momentous occasion and this very humbling experience for us. I thank my husband, Ronnie Glover, for always being here amen he's sitting on the sideline he sits on the sideline i can't even look at him he makes me laugh i said he's over there doing something funny 
but it's just a blessing to have support, support of those that are closest to you. That means more than most anything. And of course, without you, this would be not, not be a success. So thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for all that you do. Listen, let us pray as we close. God, we give you glory and honor for this moment for this time together with your people. And God, we pray that something was said that has touched the lives and the hearts of those and that will go on for days, months, weeks, years, and the future to allow them to be blessed by what you have said today. Bless us all until we meet again in another two or three weeks. In Jesus' name we pray. And we all said amen and amen. Listen, tell somebody you love them today. Give them a hug. Give them a kiss. Tomorrow is not promised. Blessings and favor to you.